Do not mess with the United States of America on our own home soil. You do not test us on our waters or in the Western Hemisphere. And if you do, you will have hell to pay for it. That's Vivek Ramaswamy, a biotech entrepreneur, one of America's richest tycoons, and a political novice who's fast climbing up the GOP nomination polls. He's even got Elon Musk calling him a promising candidate. Ramaswamy's parents migrated to the U.S. from Kerala and he was born and raised in Cincinnati in Ohio. He attended Harvard University for his undergrad and got a law degree from Yale University. He is married to Ohio State University assistant Professor Apoorva Tiwari with whom he has two children. The 38-year-old advocates for a stronger connection to the country's values, history and a nuclear family. Speaking as a member of my generation, I think we are in the middle of this national void where young people like me were just so hungry to believe in something bigger than ourselves. And I said, it's sitting right here, right in front of us. It's that flag on this gentleman's shirt and his hat right here. It's the United States of America. It's the greatest nation known to mankind. If we can revive pride in that country, I think our national problems start melting away right there. And In 2014, Vivek Ramaswamy set up Royvant, his pharmaceutical venture. Ramaswamy led Royvant to a $315 million IPO in 2015, the biggest biotech IPO at that time. The company acquired one of its first drugs, an experimental Alzheimer's medication called Interprodine from GlaxoSmithKline for $5 million. But the drug failed clinical trials and was eventually discontinued. It turns out I didn't learn my lesson. As you heard in my introduction, I've founded a biotech company, but what you may not know is that the first drug that we developed was an abysmal failure. It was a drug to treat patients with Alzheimer's disease. The entire pharma industry had tried for decades to develop a drug for Alzheimer's. And so at the ripe age of 28, I decided that I wanted to take my crack at proving everybody wrong and develop a drug that I thought looked promising. It was a promising drug, I thought. It ended up becoming one of the highest profile drugs in all of pharma. I ended up leading what ended up being the largest biotech IPO at the time in 2015 on the basis of that single drug. I was on the cover of Forbes magazine. It was actually pretty controversial. The entire scientific community was debating it. In fact, they were waiting on the edge of their seats to see whether that drug was gonna work. And for my part, I thought I was actually, in, by the age of 30, within striking distance of changing the course of medical history for the better, for these millions of patients who suffered from this terrible disease. So in 2017, we finished the trial, we turned over the cards, and it turned out to be a failure. The drug didn't work. And personally, it was devastating for me. I'd done well here at St. X. I'd graduated near the top of my class at Harvard. I'd left a comfortable career as a biotech investor behind to start this company. And then here I was, failing on this scale, more gargantuan than I could have ever imagined. I was supposed to give a speech to my employees to tell them about the results. And as I was practicing in front of my apartment that morning, I ended up breaking down in tears, and I just sat in the bathroom floor for a good half hour before heading into the office. I went from being a daring young rebel to being the guy who took a big risk and failed. I was panned in the biotech press. My peers and my competitors relished it. But eventually that experience strengthened me. It even, gave me. it even gave me a sense of freedom. It taught me that if I was free to fail on a scale that big and still survive it, then I was free to fail on an even bigger scale the next time around and still be fine in the end. And that realization encouraged me to keep taking big risks. While growing up, Vivek Ramaswamy prayed at home every day, visited temple regularly, and read Hindu epics. 
so it's no surprise that he has decided to put his Hindu faith front and center in his presidential campaign. But at the same time, he says his religion has much in common with the Judeo-Christian values this nation was founded on. At the end of the day, he is vying for a nomination of a party where evangelical Christian support is key. Ramaswamy's agenda is out-and-out anti-woke. His focus is on recapturing the American dream from a country which he claims is lost to reverse racism, climatism, covidism and gender ideology. What's wrong with this woke movement? There's a lot that's wrong with it, but first and most importantly, it creates division in our country. It tells you that if you're an individual, you're just on the tectonic plate of group identity, that you have no agency over your life, whether or not you're a member of an oppressed class or an oppressor group. That's what determines what you can achieve in life and increasingly what you're even allowed to think. Congresswoman Ayanna Presley summed it up when she said, we don't want any more black faces that don't want to be a black voice, that we don't want any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown voice. What does that say? It equates the color of your skin, your race, with the content of ideas that you're allowed to have. That is wrong. It is anti-American, and it is fracturing our country to a breaking point. Here's the other thing it does, is it creates a culture of fear that replaces our culture of free speech. Because again, if your race goes from being about your skin color to being about your ideas, then any disagreement with those ideas automatically makes you a racist. And there is no greater damnation in modern America than to be called a racist. He also has some very strong views on LGBTQIA plus movement and calls gender dysphoria a mental health disorder. I'm proud to say that I have signed the Concerned Women for America Legislative Action Committee pledge. It was an easy pledge to sign, and I think a big part of why is that it's founded on truth. There are two sexes, period. And when someone identifies as a gender different from their biological sex, especially a kid, that is indicative of a mental health condition. The compassionate thing to do is not to affirm that confusion. That is not compassion. That is cruelty. It is cruelty to everyone. And I have pledged to actually protect women from this toxic expansion of definitions of gender to say that women will be able to compete in sports as the law demands that women will be able to carry out their functions, that the only people who actually are able to give birth to children are by definition women. Our country is founded on the truth. We should not apologize for the truth. That's what it means to be an American. And that's what it meant to me to sign this pledge. Just like his controversial views, Ramaswamy's foreign policy plan has also been making headlines. It's about putting America first, even when it comes to the war in Ukraine, something that the Biden administration has been heavily invested in from day one. That we will not fight somebody else's war if they're not actually defending their own territory either. The first accomplishment that I hope to deliver in my foreign policy agenda as U.S. President will therefore be to end the Ukraine war on terms that advance American interests. I refuse to use our own military resources to defend against an invasion across somebody else's border when we should be using our own military to defend against the invasion across our own southern border in this country, the United States of America. He also wants America to have more spine when it comes to dealing with China. So we will re-enter the CPTPP trade relationships with Japan, South Korea, India, Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Australia, even bring it around, Brazil, much of South America, Central America. That puts me in a position to sit across the table from Xi Jinping and he will know that I mean it when I say 
that we're cutting the cord unless you dramatically reform. No more IP theft, no more data theft, no more turning our companies into pawns to lobby here as a condition for them being able to do business in China. We're cutting the cord. You will not buy land in this country if you're affiliated with the CCP. You will not donate to a university in this country. A U.S. business will not expand into China unless and until the CCP meets our demands or falls. He will know that I mean it because it's going to be a lot harder for them than it is for us. That's what I think we need in our foreign policy, more of a spine. A little more Churchill, a little less Chamberlain in our foreign policy, and it is when you are most willing to make a sacrifice that we will not have to make one at all. That's the way I'm going to lead us. Appreciate that. Thank you. Ram Swamy's political style has drawn comparisons to Donald Trump. When asked about being Trump's vice president, he diplomatically deflects. So my friend Donald Trump is arriving and he and I share something in common. Neither of us do pretty well in a number two position, okay? So I expect that he will be my advisor and, and, and I expect he will accept that job. So we're running for the next generation and to the, to the truth, truth of the matter, let's just speak truth. MAGA, America first, this is bigger than one man. It does not belong to me. It does not belong to Trump. It belongs to you. It belongs to us. We the people. While Trump is ahead in the GOP nomination race by a long shot, Ramaswamy has climbed up to distant number two position to tie with Ron DeSantis. He may not win the nomination, but he sure has disrupted the race. The breakout star who has been campaigning non-stop and even rapping Eminem songs on the side is likely to shape the politics of the Republican Party for the 2024 elections.